to make sure we learn and see what we need to see to be able to live up to the commitments we have made. Okay, um, straight away, you said scope one and two, the bit you control yourself. What about your scope three? What about bringing your ecosystem with you? That's something that yeah. I've spoken to a lot of people this week as well, using the power of Heineken to actually make the partners uh, and the people you, you work with in terms of partnerships and, and ecosystem come with you. Yeah. No, and it is indeed very important. We did feel we had to start on focus one or two, because before we put pressure on others, let's lead by example. And that's why we want to be net zero 2030, scope one or two. Scope three, incredibly important, much harder. Uh, but we do have convening power as a large global company. So as an example, over the last months, we have organized what we call the cooling uh, conference and we invited 25 of our suppliers in cooling fridges cooling equipment in bars and we invited them to join on our net zero pledge SBTI science-based validated and up till today I'm very proud to say 22 of the 25 already confirmed that they will join us in setting a net zero commitment and have it validated by SBTI. Yeah, it's a very serious subject, but you're talking to an Englishman who quite likes a warm beer. So it, it, ah. it, this is where we have a cultural divide <laughs> on go, as well. But, but anyway, I mean, moving on to other issues as well, and, and something that you and I have talked about previously as well. So let's share with our, with our viewers who haven't seen the uh, sustainability forum as well. And, and, and this is about agriculture. I cannot believe, I, I, I live in a rural community, as I've said to you before. I have made certain changes to what I eat and drink as well in my life as well. I cannot believe that agricultural systems, food systems, isn't a bigger talking point here. I know we've had a methane announcement, which is a step in the right direction, yeah. but it was totally absent from COP21. Are you going to put it at the forefront when you speak here at COP26? Yeah. Look, uh, as a brewer, in a way, we're an agricultural company. Absolutely. You know, our yeah. ingredients are water, hops and uh, malted barley. Uh, so this is something that indeed is very close to our heart. We know that on our barley there's still a lot to be done. We need to go to low carbon agriculture. We need to go to regenerative uh, agriculture. Is, is, the is the technological product there? Sorry to interrupt you, but is the product there now? You say you've got a lot to do on barley. I mean, let's get into, I was going to say into the weeds. Let's get into the barley. Uh, is the product there scientifically already? You mean in terms of the technological yeah. uh, solutions on how to do low carbon yeah. agriculture? Yeah, it is absolutely there. But it's, you're, you're not dealing with one or two global suppliers that you can have a conversation with. You talk about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of farmers across all of the world. You know, we have operations from Mexico to Papua New Guinea, uh, all over Africa. But it's the biggest ones who are damaging the ecosystem, isn't it? The ones who are taking out, the, the way you can drive for miles without getting the insects on your number plate and what have you. They've taken out the hedgerows, they've taken out the trees as well. They've taken out the birds. And so it, it's the biodiversity of the agriculture where you get your product from. That is, you could use your weight for that. Yeah. In a way, because barley has been around for literally thousands of years, yeah. so uh, the, where barley grows, it's where it has been growing for hundreds of years. So it's a different topic than, let's say, palm oil or something like that. Still, it's a very important topic. And uh, barley, you can grow, it, for example, rain fat, meaning no irrigation. And yet, we have farmers around the world who are drilling holes to irrigate their barley feeds. We need to work with them. But these, these are people that often, you know, close to subsistence. These are people that don't have the means or the knowledge or the technology at their disposal. So we're also there, we are trying to organize the whole value chain because there's a lot of suppliers in the agricultural space that can help and join us in moving the system uh, along. But, but we do need to be humble, you know, that will be very hard. That's systemic change. On the cooling, it's easier. We mobilize 25 global suppliers and, and you start pushing in the right direction. I'm high confidence it will happen. The agriculture part is much harder. And you're right, we need to speak more about that. What about the competition for agricultural land as we look at biofuels as, as potentially one of the answers here as well? It's been a very checkered performance, people talk about biofuels, but I mean, whether we're talking about the logistics that you use or whatever, the competition for the space to grow the underlying crops as well. How tough an issue is it to get over the competition for land usage as well? It doesn't affect us, uh, so this is not really one of our top priorities. Right. It's a hierarchy of Tell priorities, priority, right? Then, that we haven't covered. Water. Right. Uh, water is incredibly important. I will be speaking on the UN, in the UN panel on water. water so what percentage of the world's water is drinkable? It's, it's under 4% or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, something it's along tiny. those lines. And yeah. you have such uh, population pressure. Um, there's so much waste. One of the big things that is not being spoken about, 70% uh, of water usage is used by agriculture. In a lot of countries, there's no price on water because for historical reasons, uh, water was for free. So there's no incentive 
but from the agricultural sector in those kind of places to become more efficient. So we, water is something that would be very high on our uh, radar as a brewer. And as, as a brewer, water is our key ingredient when yeah. you think of it. Yeah, I mean, look, we're seeing melting glaciers, we're seeing concerns about dam construction, about hydropower and the diversion of the, the water usages as well. So what can be done though? What, 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 I mean, obviously the wastage you're talking about there, but are we just growing the wrong crops then? I mean, I'm talking to you as if you're an agricultural company. You've already said that's pretty much yeah. where, where you are originally as well. So what can be done then to actually grow the right crops in the right area? Yeah. Is that the point as well? I, I'm, we are absolutely convinced. And there's a lot of work being done on growing new varietals, new bar, in our case, new barley varietals mm. that can use rain fat, you know, be rain fat rather than being irrigation fat. And I'm sure that can be done in a lot of other... Um, also, the way, if you have to irrigate, the way you do it, are you flooding your field or are you dripping it? Uh, dripping is...